this is Lauren Chen here for Anthony Lunsford. I heard about your new fictional novel putting a little bit of common sense back into the idea of men competing in women's sports. The book is called Transgender Hoops Identify as Female. Go please read the reviews on Amazon. This is such a strange issue that we're even talking about it, but no, women's sports is not co-ed. So I'm glad there's a new book out that's kind of touching upon this issue, which seems to be everywhere on the news now. Tonight, we tackle the issue of rapid onset gender dysphoria. I'm Roaming Millennial, and you're watching Uncensored. Hey guys, in today's episode, we once again explore the issues of gender dysphoria and transgenderism. Now, this is a topic that we've discussed quite a lot on this show, and obviously, since anything to do with gender in this day and age is pretty contentious, any time I voiced what I think are reasonable opinions, like that there are two genders or that children shouldn't be given hormones that might sterilize them, I've encountered some pushback. Aside from being called a transphobe, which I have found is a very common retort, there are two things people often say when they attack my views toward trans issues. The first is, why can't you just live and let live? What we do and say in regard to gender doesn't affect anyone else, so just shut up. And the second thing is, stop attacking people for how they were born, just shut up. Well, to those people, I'd like to introduce a little concept known as rapid onset gender dysphoria. It's a fancy term and the topic of a recent Wall Street Journal op-ed that has trans activists so upset, you'd swear they'd just been misgendered. It's called When Your Daughter Defies Biology, The Burden of Mothers Whose Children Suffer from Rapid Onset Gender Dysphoria by Abigail Schreer. And Tell us a little bit, just a little bit, um, no spoilers to Matt here, about the, the book. About okay. The well, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's so hard to avoid getting into it, but, but I'll, here's how it goes. Um, the story's about nine guys, high school boys, that are basically uh, get put in a bad situation by abusive coaches. And I, and I know you've got a kid that plays hockey, so... If you, you've either had at some point in your life a bad coach or you've seen them in action on other teams and, and us as parents, it's so hurtful and it makes you so angry. So you get to see what happens. And that's kind of what sparks this whole story. It was written. It was written really as a, a, a fictional sports novel to get your interest into it. And, and that's what happens in the story. That's what sparks it. These poor, poor boys have. Uh, no chance of going to college. They had these great college dreams of playing sports and earning a scholarship. Without that scholarship, they have no chance of going to college. Um, so in rolls into the story to two gentlemen that kind of transform and change these young men's lives, um, not in a, good, in a good way for them, but not in a good way for the rest of the world. And, and, and what happens is uh, they find a loophole in the system. Um, and we all know what that loophole is. Um, it's, it's that blind political correctness that enables you to, in, in one second, be able to say, I, I choose to identify as a female, and now I'm allowed to play in women's sports. I'm allowed to play against girls the next day without taking any hormones, without doing any kind of surgeries, without seeing anyone. You just selectively do it. And that's what sparks the story. These... Um, Nine boys have an event that pulls them together from four different high schools here in Cincinnati. Uh, I won't mess that up. You got to read it to get it. But uh, and they move on and, and they have great success and they use. As bad as it is, they end up using that political correctness and that identifying as female as, as like a force field for them. They're untouchable because everybody knows that the PC sledgehammer will come down on you hard if you buck up against them. So they, they take advantage of that. Um, story goes on and, and you're really going to have to read it. But 
but the end of the story is that point to where realization hits and that gut check and it'll be that gut check for every reader that reads the book about what have i done um basically in the process of doing this to help nine boys i've burned title nine to the ground i've destroyed women's sports it's it's um that that that's over so that's kind of i guess the little spoiler alert part that uh, that's kind of short short the version reality yeah reality we have almost half the states now letting children do this identify great so anthony tell us a bit about how you feel about um being called transphobic there can be a lot of backlash online whenever somebody steps up to defend biology have you been harassed at all seen any abuse for this yeah i've had some negative comments about it um that that i don't have compassion or yeah the transphobic the term that seems like i get tossed that direction and it, it, it seems kind of silly to me because if anyone who knows me knows like i'm one of the most inclusive people you can imagine i i don't try and take on anybody or, or try and put anybody out of anything I, i've always tried to be that way and in sports you typically are when you're doing training and everything it doesn't matter if it's men or women we kind of work them together when we're practicing and training but but the hard part is for me you know, I, I even go back to when I built my gym here at our facility. Um, my contractors had a son that actually went through full-blown transgender surgery. Um, he he was a guy, football player, and um, he, you know, ended up having surgery changed. Um, still married to the same person, the same woman. And they had, they were going through hard times. They needed a vehicle. I ended up getting them a vehicle, let them have a vehicle I had. So, you know, if I was some weird, you know, not to toot my own horn there, but if I was some weird person that was like trying to pat somebody down or hurt them in any way, I wouldn't do stuff like that. I just, uh, I just try and be, like I said, inclusive as much as I can on everything. But there's just certain things that there aren't negotiable. I mean, you can't trample on the rights of, one group for a small group of another people. I mean, that, and that's what I'm seeing across the board. And, and I know it's gotta be the same thing you see. You see it deeper than I do, but you can't just just kill the, the opportunities for women to sacrifice that for such a small group of people that have a unfair advantage, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's <laughs> the feelings of a few can't annihilate the rights of women. It, per, that's per, exactly, exactly it right. Title IX that we've worked so hard to have, and we're just kind of slipping backwards if we all don't wake up here. Right. I agree. Yeah, in the, in the end, it's just words, and we brush it off, and we move forward, right? Right. That's me. It's like I, I tell people all the time, I'm 60 years old, so, you know, yeah, say all you want about me. You're, it's not really that big a deal. But, you know, I just, I just felt that it was important to put this book out. Uh, just as, as a wake up call, uh, one of the people that reviewed my book said, uh, reminiscent of George Orwell's 1984, it that, is. that, that and it was so, it, it was a hall of fame author and, and it was so nice because what his point was that you've got to look at the future right now. If you don't change it, it's changing so rapidly, you won't be able to stop it. Um, and, and that's kind of my whole point of making this so extreme in the book, but, but it, I had another person not to ramble on here, but. That, that their review was, this is a blueprint on how to undermine and, and hijack women's sports. And it really is, and, and as sad as that is. It shows the floodgate that we, we would be opening. If yeah. we continue. It's certainly a real threat that I think a lot of people almost think it's a joke when we tell them that males are invading female sports. Well, but well Beth? Honest to God, I just I went to um, a Thanksgiving event with my daughter up at uh, her college in Holland, Michigan, and to a group of senior citizens, all retirees, I gave them a copy of my book to each one of them. And when they read it, the reviews they sent me were insane. They're like, I had no idea, Anthony, this stuff was going on in our, our world. And they were like, I did. Now I started to look. And so their eyes have been opened that. Um, this is occurring and it's and it's happening every day. The more you search, the deeper you find. And I, I don't know how many people are on your side. How many guys are competing as girls now? I I, I don't know what your numbers are. Well, over 50 of them that I know oh my of gosh. is internationally, all levels of sports, all different sports. 
It's insane. And it is just the beginning. I mean, we will see in 2020, I think a lot of people aren't aware that the Olympics are allowing males to enter into the women's category, not requiring any surgery, simply lowering testosterone for a little period of time. Yeah. Reality will really sink in when we see a man collecting women's gold at the Olympics. Yeah, I agree with you. There, but it might be what it takes to wake some people up. 